Thank <laughs> you. 
Some years ago, another friend, Muhammad, said to me, what is the use to cry over this? It is usual. then sent home on a rainy night in his underwear to walk the several kilometers to his apartment. He had to lie down for several days as a result of the beating. He did not know that Majd was not home. All the men in the building came back except Maj. For some days, they had no idea whether or not he was alive. They then had information that he was in Ashkelon prison near Gaza. April 17th, 2002. Majd is not in Ashkelon prison after all. The family's lawyer was supposed to see him in Ashkelon on Sunday. But when the lawyer went, it turned out Maj was not there. This sent the family into several torturous days of wondering. Is Majd still being interrogated and tortured? Is he alive or dead? His parents are still trapped by curfew in their little apartment with their 11-year-old daughter, Haria. They had no way of finding out more about their son.
news had come. Their lawyer had found their son, at least on paper. Instead of Eshkelon, Maj is in Muscovia prison in Jerusalem. The lawyer was not allowed to see him, but was assured he is there. in American prisons. It is illegal in most states. It is a tiny room too small to sit up or lie down in with one small opening for air. The prisoner is kept inside for nine or 15 or 30 days or more, given food, left to eat and sleep and excrete in this small space for as long as they keep him there. He has no way of knowing how long it has been or how long it will be. The intent is to soften whatever he knows, which in Maj's case is nothing. Thus, Maj begins his career in what Palestinians call university. This is his first arrest. The great majority of Palestinian men in the occupied territories undergo treatment like this. undertaking to use his time in university well. He is learning Hebrew and studying for the end of high school tests, which he hopes to take if and when he is released. December 22nd, 2002. We spent last night with Lutvia and family in Ramallah. They were fiddling with a ramshackle kerosene heater attempting to supply heat in a freezing cold winter when gas and electricity are unreliable. January 6, 2003. Palestinians are not allowed to visit their relatives in prison. Palestinians are not allowed to visit their relatives in prison. Hearings in Israeli military court are the only opportunity for families to see their sons, brothers, and fathers. 
We were able to sit with Lutfia and Mahmoud at such a hearing for their son, Majd. Hearings in Israeli military court are the only opportunity for families to see their sons, brothers, and fathers. We were able to sit with Lutfia and Mahmoud at such a hearing for their son, Maj. gathers evidence. When Majd was finally brought in, Lutfia smiled at him and sat beaming when as if she were witnessing in, his when graduation Lutfia smiled at him and sat beaming when as if she were witnessing his graduation sat beaming as if she were witnessing his graduation from college.
tiny rifts in the green tarp. Then the young men were led away, and we came away with the mothers and tried to come. Then the young men were led away, and we came away with the mothers. Then the young men were led away, and we came away with their mothers and tried to comfort them in and tried to comfort them in their tears. And tried to comfort them in their tears. And tried to comfort them in their and tears. And tried to comfort them in their tears. And tried to comfort them in their tears. January 29th, 2003. Our goal in the hearing was to secure urgent medical treatment for Ma's ear, chronic ear condition. Without surgery, the ear condition will most likely result in deafness. And the prison authorities have so far offered nothing but aspirin. At the hearing, the military magistrate postponed the issue, but ordered that Maj should be examined by prison medical authorities. We just heard from Maj's mother that he was taken for the examination last week. The doctors did an examination of his eyes. Maj apparently told, him, told them that the eyes were not the problem, but the doctors chose not to believe him. May 29th, 2003. Maj had his final court date on Tuesday. After a year of detention and hearings and non-hearings and changing charges, Maj was finally accused of being part of a drive-by shooting in which a Palestinian man was hurt. No one has accused him of the actual shooting. Maj was sentenced to 30 years in prison. He is 20 years old. 
Majd has recently been moved to a prison near Beersheba in the Negev desert. Conditions have become worse lately. Prisoners are locked down. No books, no studying, no visitors. No one in his family has been allowed to visit him. No one in his family has been allowed to visit him. Not even his youngest sister. Not even his youngest sister. Maj is still getting no medical care for his ear condition. Without special care, he will likely go deaf in one ear, and his face may become paralyzed on one side. Maj is a quiet and mostly somber young man, not given to making speeches. Maj is a quiet and mostly somber young man, not given to making speeches. After being sentenced, however, he did make a statement. According to Lutfia, part of what he said was, I hold no ill will against any Jew or Israeli. I have the right to resist occupation. The occupation is what should be on trial here, not me.
our show. We appreciate you for being here, and we will now serve Brad and Ioli right through this path in the backyard. Also, the cheap art bus and the museum and museum press store will be open for your perusal. And also, every Sunday in this summer, Sunday at 2 o'clock, we have sideshows, and 3 o'clock begins our circus through August. So please join us again. Thank you very much. Woo